Hey class, welcome to exam uh, week 12 unit exam review. I don't have a PowerPoint, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and just go over some of the concepts quickly that were missed. One of them was on uh, Rusbolt's uh, seeking to improve relationship. If you remember on page 130 or 350, uh, towards the end of 350, beginning or towards the middle of 350 I believe it is uh, talks about how uh, to to dissolve a marriage versus to construct it uh, remember if you're trying to uh, improve the relationship one of the passive ways of doing it is being loyal being having loyalty you're waiting for the improvement if you're going to actively build and cope with this with, with the relationship you're going to use your voice okay which means you're going to speak okay so if you're seeking the coping way is seeking to to improve is by voice by speaking about it to deconstruct you neglect a partner you ignore them or you exit okay so just remember that if you're trying to build a relationship that's failing you're going to speak about it or you could be the loyal person who kind of waits for the improvement to happen Another concept that was actually missed was the reward theory. So this part of relationships on um, attractiveness um, and building relationships, people that are dissimilar tend up not having compatibility to like one another. So we tend to like things that like that are like us. And so that's what kind of the reward theory is. Uh, the reward theory of, of attraction is we like those whose behaviors is rewarding to us or whom we associate with rewarding events. So if, if it's anything that's like similar to us, uh, close in proximity or attractiveness, we're looking for something that's close to what, who we are, or what we are. Okay. So you can look at that in page 335. Um, there's a part in there that talks about how the reward theory has the, the proxy that, it costs less time and effort to receive or benefit from the friendship. So proximity is your close by. Attractiveness, obviously desirable traits, and similar to our opinions and similar to who we are. Uh, so there's the mutual respect, thus you mutually like each other. So that's that reward theory. The other thing about um, when it comes to relationships, one of the other concepts that was missed was um, how we can stimulate um, and improve our human relations with others. Um, and what's interesting is conflict does that. Um, I know a lot of people would be like, well, how does fighting or conflict does that when there's two people that have conflicting viewpoints? Um, how does that help improve a relationship? So... Uh, one of the things that the book says is genuine peace is more than the suppression of open conflict. So it says that peace is the outcome of creativity, cre creatively managed conflict. So just because there's conflict doesn't necessarily mean it's just going to end up in a negative way. So there's positives to conflict um, uh, as people could actually use it as a way of improving relationships between groups. Uh, the other concept that was missed is self-fulfilling prophecies. So anytime there's some kind of like prediction or I wouldn't say prediction, probably more like a stereotype assumption, like what looks bad is probably bad uh, is one way of looking at it. Um, another way of looking at it is like, you know, what looks good is probably good. So we see somebody like in a business suit. Uh, wearing a tie and they probably, you know, uh, they look like they're not going to be somebody that is uh, going to do harm to people. But then when you look at like uh, maybe in the future, when you look at the um, um, person's past, maybe their criminal record or something, you found out, wow, how could they actually be somebody uh, that did such a heinous crime or maybe looks like they are a good person but they're not um and so sometimes that self-fulfilling prophecy kind of predicts that you know uh what is good what is beautiful to stereotype type of thing especially when it comes to attraction and what you're looking at right now like a perfectly average person nice clean cut hair 
you know, uh, wears glasses, looks real uh, intelligent, but they are they really good using that self-fulfilling prophecy of, yep, they look good, therefore they must be good, which is a very big inaccuracy. So that's something that was missed. Remember that about self-fulfilling prophecy? I know we talked about that in previous weeks, but that's something that you want to make sure you kind of comprehend for the final. Um, the other things missed, one of the thing, other things missed was Darley and I believe it's pronounced Latine's decision tree, which is pretty interesting because it's about assuming responsibility. So there was a part where it was like, you know, if, if the email was sent to you, uh, by yourself to just you asking for help, you're most likely to reply and respond. But if it's sent to a group of people on email, like 10 to 15, the chances of you responding or individual responding is going to be slim because there's more people involved. So the assumption is someone's going to help or not going to help is basically what the tree says. And so if you look at the figure, there's figure five in the book. Um, let's see if I can find the page, page 369. It talks about if it was a notice of the incident, um, did they interpret it as a, an emergency? Did they re assume responsibility? Did they try to help or not? So the whole point of the tree is uh, this, this assumption of responsibility. And part of helping um, is, is understanding the differences of uh, attributions. So like, um, helping somebody in distress or if they appear to be in distress is tied to attributions, which means did the person that did, uh, that's in trouble, is it the perception that it's their fault that they're in trouble or is it something that was like an accident that happened? If it's an accident that happened, then the individual or people will most likely help. They'll feel like they're going to help. If they feel like the person gets what they deserve type mentality where they're like, oh, well, the person put themselves in that situation, they're most likely not going to help. So that's the difference between the two. Figure three, page 360, shows that. Okay, you can look at that where the attributes are, uh, where to discuss attribution. And there's a nice, you know, person in need, where they, is it uncontrolled or controlled? If it was uncontrolled sympathy, and they help. If it's controlled, it's no sympathy, they, no help. So pretty clear cut on that one, but take a look at that on that page. So a part of helping is also Darley and Batson's uh, Good Samaritan. Um, and so there's that parable with the Levite and the priest that leave and they don't, it seems like they're, it, they're in a hurry to go do duties or go do their thing. Whereas uh, the Samaritan actually comes by and helps. Well, Darley and Batson learned to research that it was a time pressure thing. So if the person looks at somebody that's in distress, um, do they have time to stop and help fix the tire? Does the person look like they're um, needing help change the tire? Is it male or female that, that needs help? Um, if I'm late to work, chances are I'm going to leave. If I have time and I can do it, I'm not in a hurry. I will actually stop and help. So that's what they found through the research. It was more of a time pressure. I believe through the research they found that um, like only 10% of those that helped that were under stress or, or uh, under time pressure actually helped versus those that, that, did, that did help. So um, part of the helping part uh, in the prisoner's dilemma and tragedy of commons, um, kind of tie into that a little bit about, um, attributions, whereas like in terms of how people view each other in terms of mistakes we've made, or if we need help or not, you know, we look at our situation more, more sensitively than we do others. In other words, like when something happens to us, we look at the situation as the problem. Oh, I was put in this situation. Dispositionally would mean like if I saw something happen that um, you could say it's in you were out of, it was out of your controls. It was a situation that caused a problem. I would sit back and say, nope, it was dispositional, which means you put yourself in that situation. It's your behavior. Also, it could mean that perhaps 
um, it's their trait, it's their personality. It wasn't the situation, it wasn't the environment, it was the person who did it. So it's their fault. Finally, the last one to go over is at arbitration versus mediation. They sound kind of the same because it's a third party within the conflict. So if, if there's a divorce, you can have somebody be a mediator or an arbitrator. The difference between the two is a mediator, someone who does mediation, sits down and kind of organizes the conversation between the two so that the two come into a uh, successful agreement on the end of the relationship or uh, the building up of the relationship. Okay, so in, in divorces, mediation is maybe a lawyer or somebody sitting down and kind of refereeing the conversation so that, that both could actually come to a decision. Both parties can come to a decision on how the relationship is going to end. Arbitration means that if, if mediation doesn't work and um, the two people in the party or two in the divorce settlement or case uh, cannot come to an agreement to hire an arbit to go to arbitration, which means that the third party makes the decisions for them. Listen, they, the person does mediate, they sit down, they listen to both sides, but then they make a decision and usually that's like a judge, right? So you go through arbitration. You see that with contracts and ath athletes uh, in professional sports when the agent and the athlete can come to an agreement with the GM and owner, so they go through arbitration. And then the lawyer says, here, this is what the arbitrator says. This is the terms of the contract. This is what you can do, and this is what you're going to do. And then that usually settles it um, towards the end. So those are the concepts that were missed. Um, if you have any questions about these uh, concepts that I went over, um, please let me know. Definitely. Um, uh, want to make sure you're prepared. So if you have any questions, please send me an email.